welcome back to the studio. Now we're going to hear from David Gasso, who is going to give us a weather forecast of El Nino and La Ninas. In the studio with me, the host David Gasso. Today I'm going to be talking wi with you about El Ninos and La Ninas. These are great weather phenomena. Let's start with El Ninos. This is a map which represents Rockhampton and LAX. LAX is right there up in the corner where there's the A circled in and Rockhampton is down in Australia where there's a circle around the middle of that. I, when you ask yourself why am I telling you this, this this the, the precipitation data or the rainfall data you'll see in the next few graphs are going to be ba based on the, these two these two spots. So so now just uh, you know where around these these two locations are. So if I'm talking about Rockhampton, it's going to be down in Australia where they where, where it's circled in. And if I'm talking about LAX, it's going to be up there on the other side of the Pacific o Pacific Ocean at LAX in the USA. Before we can understand El Nino, we have to understand normal weather conditions. Normal weather conditions are here represented on the graph. Blue is LAX and green is Rockhampton. Rockhampton is in Australia, one side of the Pacific Ocean, while the while LAX or Los Angeles is in the USA on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. This graph represents precipitation. It is in millimeters. Some people, normal weather, weather or, or a normal day, it's just, it's nice and sunny, kids are playing around, just a completely normal day, not like the other. But if they look up, they see normal clouds, a few clouds, not that cloudy. They think, not gonna rain or anything. Have you ever asked yourself why there are droughts? Why there are floods? Well, an El Nino does these things. It's not the only factor which ca causes uh, floods and droughts, but it's one I'm of them. I'm gonna answer the question which you have all been waiting for. What is an El Nino? An El Nino is an irregular warming in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. This warming changes weather patterns and it weakens the trade winds, which normally blow from east to west. The, the trade winds sometimes even get turned around, which means they blow from west to east. This can cause a lot of damage. Some examples would be, one, floods. Floods could, could occur around Asia, more like Eurasia, it could occur anywhere there. Two, it also makes a lot of droughts. If there's floods, there have to be drought. The water just doesn't, it doesn't appear from anywhere. The, these droughts norm, normally are pretty much around the world. These can be like from anywhere from Australia to the US. This is a graph of the precipitation in an El Nino year. Blue represents LAX, Los Angeles, and green represents Rockhampton again. The only difference is this is in the El Nino year, 1983. So the El Nino obviously brought more more precipitation in LAX, but it, it there was a drought in Rockhampton. This is, is the cause of an El Nino. This graph represents precipitation in millimeters. As you can see, there's there was way more precipitation in Rockhampton this year in the El Nino year than last year. And in Los Angeles, they had way less precipitation. This is a very common effect of El Nino. One, one side of the Pacific Ocean has a drought, while the other one is getting flooded. I predict the next El Nino in the next one to two years. I, do, I predict in the, this in the next one to two years, mainly because of the last El Ninos. The last El Ninos always ha had a seven-year difference around around seven-year difference, 
and it's been quite a long time since we didn't have an El Nino. But we had a lot of La Ninas, and La Ninas I'm going to talk about right now. And La Nina is basically the opposite of an El Nino. And La and El Nino is an irregular warming of the Pacific Ocean. While in La Nina is a regular cooling in the Pacific Ocean. And La Nina also has basically the opposite effect. And El Nino is, like I just said, the opposite, the completely opposite of an La Nina. And La Nina causes snowstorms, blizzards, big snowstorms, big blizzards, stuff you don't want to live in. Weather causes where you don't want to be in. While uh, El Nino causes floods, tsunamis, stuff like that. This is a graph of La Nina. Again, LAX is in blue and Rockhampton is in green. As you can see, the blue, um, so LAX has way had way less rain than La Nina. And so did Ra Ra Rockhampton. Rockhampton got up there later on. It got got up there, it got a little bit more precipitation. And early eggs in December had a lot of precipitation. While in January and February, they didn't have a lot. And in March, they ha have hardly any. And in July, June, and like beginning summer to end summer, they had a lot too. Now that we compared, El Ninos to La Ninas using precipitation data. Let's do that the same thing, just with surface temperatures. Let's start again with the normal conditions of sur surface temperatures. Okay, this is the surface temperature of the ocean in normal weather conditions. As you can see, there's a little bit of cold weather at the coast at the coast of Brazil, Mexico, more like Argentina, and yeah. <laughs> this is the normal weather you would like to see every day. This is a map of the Pacific Ocean. As you can see, it, it is probably in an El Nino year because it's so warm and like red. Left, like on the left side, a little bit further down, you you can see the, you can see Australia, and on the right side, you can see part part of part of the U.S. Mostly California, though. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this El Nino weather forecast. Thank you guys for listening.